Let's take a moment to talk about what we're going to cover in week three of the course. So first, just a, a reminder of the previous week, we talked about the ideas of confounding, mediation, collinearity, effect modification, as well as independent predictors. We talked about these in the context of building effect size models, and we talked about them both conceptually, what they are, as well as how to identify them numerically, or how they behave numerically in the model. And we stressed that the concepts are more important than how they behave numerically. We also talked about these very much in a compartmentalized way, that we explored the idea of confounding with looking at just including one confounder in a model, ignoring the other potential variables. Same with the idea of effect modification, looking one variable at a time. Now what we're going to do this week is we're going to try and put all those ideas together. So we're going to talk about model building and variable selection. So how can we take all these ideas we've learned, combine them um, into one, and take a data set and try and build a model um, employing all of these concepts we've learned. We're going to separate it. We're going to do it both for effect size models, which is a lot of what we've been talking about in the course, if we want to estimate the effect of some variable x1 on an outcome. And we're also going to take um, less time, but a little bit of time, to talk about model building and variable selection if we want to build a predictive model. So if our goal is just to get a good estimate of the outcome, rather than estimate the effect of some variable on an outcome. Um, I also want to remind you, we talked a little bit as a side note, so it's not um, covered as a P, um, an accessible piece of information in the course, but we talked about the idea of directed acyclic graphs, or DAGs, and this is another really good way of thinking about which variables to include or exclude in a model when you want to try and estimate the effect of some variable x1 on an outcome. So that's um, something I've, I'm mentioning throughout the course, and I've um, on the website, I've po pointed to some resources that you can look at on your own if you want to explore this idea as well. And when talking about model building and variable selection procedures, we're going to talk a bit about the partial F test. So this is a way for testing, adding or removing terms from a model. And we're going to look at how that test can be used when building effect size models or building predictive models, as well as the concept of AIC or BIC. Again, these are other measures that are used for comparing competing models to help us try and decide on which model we think is uh, the best model. We will, I haven't written it down here, we will make a brief mention of automated um, variable selection procedures like forward selection or backward selection, stepwise selection, some of these ideas. We won't talk too much about them, and part of the reason is they don't really work at all for effect size models. Right there we want to think about um, these concepts, right? What is a confounder? Um, are there mediators? And decide to include or exclude variables based on those criteria. Um, automated procedures just run through some algorithms to try and reach a final model. And, well, like I said, we'll touch on them briefly because they do have a place in the predictive modeling world, but they're also sometimes are just run blindly numerically without thinking about the concepts or the ideas of which variables may make sense in a model or not. So we'll, we'll touch on the idea of automated variable um, selection procedures, but it won't get too much of a feature in the course. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.